We start digging down that rock, going deeper and deeper and deeper. Couldn't you say that's kind of like going back into time? And as we go deeper, what might we find sometimes? Find fossils is exactly right. What do you call the scientists that studies fossils? They have, what do you call them? Very good, paleontologists. My name's Jimmy Baldwin and today I'm at Vulcan Materials Lacon Quarry. Hey, I'm Stan Ware, owner driver of Popeye's number 13 Supercat. I've been racing in offshore probably since uh, 77, so do the math. Racing in the, in the early 80s and on into the 90s was, was totally different than that. We did 220 mile races. Um, the start was, was spectacular all the time, and the finishes weren't usually that spectacular. Five, six hours later, usually a 60% attrition rate. You see one guy come in and finish the, finish the race with not too many boats close around him, not like, like today's races where you almost get NASCAR style finishes. I think Big Al was the pioneer. He, he brought some things, uh, he was a visionary with the sport and a lot of other things. He researched the rule book and found out that there was uh, unlimited power plants. When big money is invested, the majority of it is in safety. We had so many deaths when I first came into the sport, so now we have all the Hans devices and everything in the seats and all, of course, as much safety equipment as we can. But now we need to have a spotter over them in a, in a helicopter because these poor guys can't even see out the windows. They just only have like a limited, they have 13 inches here and maybe about 36 inches this way to see going out. So you almost need to have a spotter. It's all about safety and whatever we can do to grow and promote the sport. We haven't forgotten that it's still a very, very dangerous sport. And um, every day that we look at these boats, we come up with different ideas of ways that we can make things safer. Every time we take another step forward in speed, we reevaluate our whole safety program. Our job is number one, make it safe for our racers by design as far as racing and by design as far as boats. I mean, we have an interaction with all the factories. We'll flat out tell them if their boat is safe or if there's an issue. And, uh, and that's a positive interaction. Bottom it just takes care of the attitude of the boat, the speed of the boat, you know, the conditions. I mean, you, you, there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, just you, you just don't put the throttles down and go. I mean, you got to make sure the drives are in good shape when you when you go to turn the boat or you spin out. I mean, there's multiple multiple things going on. The tunnel flap and it's just there's a lot more. It's it's a lot tougher than, than people think. I mean, it's like real real tough. So there's people that go out there and have a fast pleasure boat. They run it for 10 second bursts. Oh, well, let's see how fast it goes. They hold it down for 10 seconds and let go off. You, you get out there and you hold it down for an hour, and it's a whole different world. I guess looks are deceiving because there's nothing like that. I mean, what's going through your head and what's what you're doing at the time. I mean, it, it gets really intense in there. But yeah, the old board act like we're just taking a ride. I got to the right. I got it. 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 To the right. They're all right. I got him. I got him. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. I got and em. communication is key, although different in each boat. Sometimes in a rough water race, you, you hear me complaining about every bump that we hit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my way is uh, I'm screaming and yelling at him. He's yelling back at me. We're, we're throwing those four letter words at each other all the time. Got the rough and try to be bad. I am down. I am going. I'm going. Steve, relax. Wow. Green buoy on the left, or clear on the right, or I'm asking the question, question is it clear, and he'll say yes, clear left. An extra set of eyes can mean the difference between finishing a race or ending it upside down. All right, here we go. Start to turn. Here we go. Turn. Come on, come on. That's perfect. After watching unlimited hydroplanes take corners at 150 miles per hour, Travis and Bob decided it was time to find out more about these amazing machines. I can't even speak right now. 
<laughs> give you the first lap? Yeah, give you the first lap. It's on, baby. Then I'll be crying, I want my mommy. Get me off this boat. I need to get one. We got Mike Webster who's going to take us for a go round in his go fast boat. These hydroplanes do over 200 miles an hour. Absolutely insane. 3,000 horsepower in a boat that weighs 7,000 pounds. We race with a T5 L57 uh, turbine here, and this, uh, this turbine makes about 3,000 horsepower with the fuel restrictions that we're allowed to run. Um, top speeds will be approaching 200 miles an hour on the courses that we run at. Uh, those corners are around 140, 150. So we're really moving through the corners and there's a lot of G-forces uh, that are going there and the acceleration on these is, is very, very fast. Well, this is the, the, basic, uh, the basic hull here. If you look underneath, you'll notice that we have two spots that's hanging down in our main, our main air funnel here. So this is what really traps the air and holds it for us so we can get up over the water and really start to ride. So when you're out of the water, that's when we start to pick up speed, just like you guys do. You us. guys have, what, probably full oxygen all the time? Yep, full oxygen all the time. Okay. Um, so, you know, we carry tanks and we fill them after every heat. We're good to go that way. This is your best friend. This is our best friend. This is a skid fin. This holds a tremendous amount of torque because we're going through these turns right here. This is one of the tightest turns on the course that we, uh, on the circuit that we'll do. And so the, the force that's put on here is tremendous. As you saw yesterday when we had that accident, this is what let go. This came off. So the rudder that's in the back end really just kind of sets it up for the turn and this is what's really going to hold. Okay, so this, yeah, this truly is our best friend out in the race. What would you say the G-force is if you guys going on my corner like this? Uh, probably around three. Three Gs? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right, see. Fuel shut off. So as we're coming in, that's how we turn the, turn the boat off. That's basically your fuel shut off, so it just cuts off all fuel from the motor, shuts it right down. So you've got your two paddles here on the left, which control your front. Yep. The front so stabilizer. One's an upwind, one's a downwind. So we can control the attitude of the boat. Don't mind me, I'm ready for takeoff. I want one. All right, hey, thanks a lot. Good luck today. Be safe, and I'll tell you what, I'll trade you a ride on the crab boat for riding that any day. Uh, I don't know. It sounds, <laughs> I don't know if I want to go on the crab boat. I'm in. I think that the Big Island is the way Hawaii was a longer time ago. What I like the most about this site is the little milder climate. It's never too hot. And since I consider rain as a blessing, and also my trees in the orchard, they need sunshine and rain. So this is, for me, the perfect place. I love the rainforest. I love the way everything grows here and how the earth smells after a rain. You can really smell the healthy, nutritions and you can smell life. My goal as manager of the orchard is to produce a quality product to our customers. We concentrate on the orchard and we put all the natural resources of the orchard back into the orchard such as the leaves, the husks, and the branches when we come out into the orchard and mulch them. During the harvest period um, my, my job is to get out into the orchard and pick up all the nuts, bring them back to the husker, and uh, get them ready to be husked. 